live from Wayne Profit Court on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. You're watching Division Three Men's College Basketball on LHSN. Thank you everybody for spending some of your Sunday afternoon. We welcome you into Turner Gymnasium for a fun matchup between the University of Lynchburg entering in at 1-1 most recently coming off a loss at the hands of Mary Washington and CNU comes in number through a rank coming into the game with a record of 3-1. I beg your part, TJ Winger here to take you through all the action. Most recently for the captains to win against Eastern University by double figures. Going to be a fun one and a battle between two of the best teams the Commonwealth has to offer. Here are some of the stats coming into the contest. CNU features a high octane offense to say the least 83 points per contest. I think a big number to keep your eye on today, the rebounds per contest. CNU 3-0 when they out rebound opponents and that's one of the biggest strengths this Lynchburg team has to offer. So who can win the battle on the glass? And there's plenty of talent for both these sides. Let's talk about some players to watch. Starting with the visiting captains. Trey Barber has been fantastic so far this season. The CTC Player of the Week and coming off a career high 28 points against Eastern. He's played at least 26 minutes and three consecutive games for CNU. Big man down low in the starting lineup again today. And on the other side of the court, the battle between the bigs, TC Thacker. He's got a double-double in each of the first two games. He led the ODAC in that category with seven a season ago. And also first team VA SID all state a year ago. So plenty of accolades for Thacker. And the coaches for both sides are also two of the best inside the Commonwealth. John Krikorian in his 12th year at the helm for CNU. Taken to the Final Four a couple of times, and wherever he's gone in his coaching career, he has had success follow. He got his 300th career win not that long ago. We'll talk about that throughout the broadcast. And on the other side, it's Hillary Scott in his 14th year leading this Lynchburg program. Lynchburg native, took him to the championship game a season ago. The national anthem is vastly approaching. We'll step aside and come back with starters and tip between Lynchburg and Christopher Newport here on LHSN. Welcome back to Lynchburg, Virginia. Time to present to you the starting lineups for both these sides. Lynchburg seeing Theron Suggs, as well as Camp Savage, Carrington Young, T.C. Thacker, and Izzy Lockamy. And Lockamy, player I want to talk about, coming off a career high 16 points on Friday against Mary Washington. 
Six of 11 shooting from the field, four of seven from beyond the arc. Those four made threes, also a career high for the senior from Wake Forest, North Carolina. On the other side, for Christopher Newport, John Hines has been solid to start the year at 18.7 rebounds against Moretta, number three team in the country. Team best, 11 boards against Eastern. Last time CNU took the hardwood. Ty Henderson's been solid so far this year. Positive contributions from a freshman and product of L.C. Bird High School in the Richmond, Virginia area. And, of course, Adrian Beasley, someone who's been solid throughout his entire career, making his 15th career start, 34th career game played for the captains. All-time, Lynchburg is 4-5 and five against CNU, 3-1 and one at home, but have dropped two of the last three, including the last time these two teams took the hardwood against one another. 79-77 win for CNU in 2019 in that game. Saw some familiar faces to what we see tonight for Lynchburg. Darren Suggs had a team high 23 points. You see him on your screen there. And TC Dacker tallied up 17 in that contest. And on the other side, it was Adrian Beasley dropping 17 for the captains and then anchored with 12 more coming from Jason Agner. It's the home opener for Lynchburg. They've started the season on the road against Methodist and then Mary Washington. Meanwhile, CNU, this technically is their first true road game. They did play a couple of games at neutral sites against Washington College and Johns Hopkins. And it was a win against Johns Hopkins, the number 14 team in the country, followed by a loss against Moretta. Three-point differential against the number three team in the country. And then, as I mentioned at the start of the broadcast, a win on the road against Eastern University, 83-72 final score in their most recent contest. Stage is set. Battle between two of the best teams in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Set to ensue. Be a lot of fun. Again, thank you all for spending some time with us here on your Sunday afternoon. We're excited to bring to you our first men's basketball broadcast on the year for LHSN. First of many. And we are excited to see Lynchburg and the captains of CNU battle it out. Players take the court. It's going to be Trey Barber. At midcourt, jump ball for CNU. Talk about the sophomore and how beneficial and a big plus he's been in the starting five so far this year. Enters the match with 15.3 points per game, seven boards a contest, four blocks per game. Gaudy numbers there. And he stands juxtaposed to the opposing number 24, T.C. Thacker. Talk about Thacker in the opening. Double doubles in each of the first two games. He had seven last season. Tip is up, opening possession. Goes to CNU and it's Ty Henderson, the freshman, to bring it across. Taking the screen left, this is John Hines. Defended by Carrington Young, transfer from Ferrum. Adrian Beasley working against Izzy Lockamy. Big size advantage for CNU, but no bucket to go with it. Three on two the other way, Cam Savage. Transfer from Barton College, forced to slow down the tempo. Trying to dump it off for T.C. Thacker, broken up by Barber. We'll see if the trend continues for Lynchburg. The team that's gotten onto hot starts in each of their first two. Led Methodist 51 to 21 at the break. And then it gets Mary Washington on Friday. It was a 21 to eight game. About seven and a half minutes to go in the first half. First pass of the day comes courtesy of Theron Suggs. His three-point shooting has been a big strength to start the year. Entered the game shooting 66.7% from downtown. He's one for one today. Just big man's rebound there for Carrington Young. Young hands it off to Suggs. Lock me open. Far side wing. One more pass. It's now with Savage. Trying to go baseline to beat Henderson. He'll lose it. It's the first turnover of the day for Lynchburg. We'll also see our first sub as Matt Brody checks in for the captains. Native to Fairfax, Virginia. Spent his freshman year at JMU. Brody now a senior. Be the combo guard with Henderson. Tries to get past Savage. Kicks it over to Beasley. Brody for Barber. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Working against Thacker. Gets it back to Henderson, who has it slipped through his hands, taken away by Thacker. 
Still just the one made field goal coming from Suggs. Carrington Young drives in, soft off the glass, shot off the mark. Young stays with it. Nice use of the dribble from Thacker, and it's an early 5-0 lead for Lynchburg. And an early timeout used by 12th year head coach John Krikorian. Not even two minutes in the contest, using the first timeout. And let's talk a little bit about John Krikorian. Fourth coach in program history. He's taken CNU to two Final Four appearances that came in 2015-16 and 2018-19. And overall, his record at CNU, 236 wins to 60 losses. That's a win percentage, a tick underneath 80%. That is an unbelievable number for college basketball. And it's just a 30-second timeout here, so really the timeout serves as an opportunity for Coach Gregorian and his squad to reset a little bit. Down five points early. Looking to break through against the hot start against Lynchburg, which to continue my point from earlier, Hornets have gotten out to hot starts in each of their first two games this year. Against Mary Washington on Friday, 21-8 lead with seven and a half minutes left in the first half. They ended up trailing at the break, 30 to 27. And ultimately it was a one possession loss at the hands of the Eagles. That makes this game that much more important. Jamal Madison just checked in after the timeout. He'll take the three point shot in the face of Young. Shot no good, off it's a board for Brody. Handed off Joshua Campbell. He can't connect on the trifecta. Jake Lotto almost got the offensive rebound, but Young has it for Lynchburg. Trying to go coast to coast. No foul on the play, and Young misses the gimme. If you're a CNU fan, you're saying ball don't lie. For Lynchburg, you're wishing Young could have kissed that one off the glass and then make it a seven-point lead. Shot fake from Brody. Lotto trying to play the high-low game with Ian Anderson to no avail. Savage, step back. Shot off the back of the iron. Brody wide open in transition. Contest from Suggs a little too late. CNU gets their first two on the afternoon. Trey Pittman's going to check in for the Hornets. Next dead ball. Backdoor cut. Savage couldn't handle it initially from Young. Game high, three points for Suggs. Drops it off for Thacker. Defended well by Lotto. The fading shot is tough to defend, and T.C. Thacker has his first two points of the game. Jamal Madison, sophomore from Norfolk, Virginia, to bring it across for the captains. Taking the screen right, this is Joshua Campbell. CNU turns it over. Pittman checks in now, the first sub for the Hornets. He'll come on for Carrington Savage. In the early goings, three turnovers already for CNU, just one for Lynchburg. Captains one for five from the field, Lynchburg three for six. Pick and pop with Pittman. Defended by Anderson, picks up his dribble, swings over to Savage. Shot clock's at 10. Another pick and pop. Pittman for three, indeed. Largest lead of the day, up to eight for Lynchburg. Double screen at the top of the key. Madison steps back, tries to get the three back off the side of the rim. Rebound for Pittman. Suggs picked up by Campbell. His step back three, count it. Lead up to 11, another timeout call by Coach John Krikorian with 15-19 to go in the first half. It's another 30-second timeout, so we will keep it here. And again, it's another one of those short timeouts you're just trying to break the momentum advantage that's on the side of Lynchburg. This team has come out hot, especially from beyond the three-point line. Three for three to start, it doesn't get any better than that. But again, that's what a common theme through the first two games so far for Lynchburg. Now, can they take the hot start and then play it for 40 minutes long? It's a tough challenge for every college basketball team, but it's certainly going to be the case today as Lynchburg looks to get their first home win of the year and take down the captains. CNU's only loss 
against the number three team in the country. That would certainly pat the resume for Lynchburg if they do come away as the victor today. Plenty of college basketball left to be played. As I said, 15, 19 to go in the first half. Savage is going to pick up Henderson. Full distance to the hardwood. Three consecutive starts now for Henderson. Did not start the first two. Izzy Lockamy creates the turnover. Leads it the other way. Has Pittman. No basket, but the foul is called. Pittman is floating in the air for a moment. A little too strong off the glass, but first two free throws on the day for Lynchburg. Set to come to you here on LHSN. Pittman, a sophomore from Wilson, North Carolina. Subchecks on for CNU. This is Nick Thomas, junior from Yorktown. Pittman goes one for two. Lead stretched to 12. Henderson has Savage fall. Mid-range J won't go. Nearly tipped back in. The second chance opportunity coming from Mike Lee Jr. Instead, rebound gathered by Suggs. Tries to play it off the leg of Thomas. Can't get it out of play. And once Savage possesses, timeout called by Coach Hillary Scott. 30-second timeout, but a big break there. Otherwise, Lynchburg would have been close to that. And court violation holding for 10 seconds. So five and a half minutes, not even reaching that point. We've seen three timeouts already used by these two coaches. It's going to be an interesting impact that these two sides have throughout the rest of the contest. We talked about Coach McCorian. Let's talk about Coach Scott. Went to EC Glass High School, not even 10 minutes away from the campus of the University of Lynchburg. Played at Roanoke and eventually played professionally overseas in Ireland and England. And he's done a great job turning this program around. Former assistant coach at Penn State as well as East Tennessee State University. And he has Lynchburg as the preseason pick to finish fourth in the conference. We're also receiving top 25 national votes in the preseason coaches poll. Out of the timeout, Lockamy to inbound. Gets it to Savage. Game today, having a hard time shooting the basketball from downtown. 0 of 3 so far. Pulls up, mid range, Jay is true. 16 to 2. Just over 14 minutes to go in the first half. Hot start for Lynchburg. Darian Peterson swings it over, near side wing. Out the elbow, this is Ian Anderson driving against Pittman. Won't see the layup go through, but he does get the foul. Anderson headed the free throw line, a junior. Shining at 6'7", 225. He did the Sterling, Virginia. First foul to go against Pittman and Lynchburg as a team. Anderson sees the first fall through. He's now six for six on the season on the free throw line. Anderson a couple games back had a tough showing against Johns Hopkins. 0 for 7 from the field in that one. Then just played one minute against Eastern University. Three games prior, he played 19, 21, and 24 minutes respectively in chronological order. Second free throw short, but Anderson gets his own offensive rebound. Peterson can't get past Thacker. Trying to get it to Anderson. Tipped away by Lockamy. Ball still loose. Jordan Parham can't collect it. Trying to beat the shot clock. Turnaround attempt comes from Mike Lee Jr. And it was nowhere near the rim. That's a great possession there for Lynchburg playing a full 30 seconds of defense. And with 13.45 in the first half, we reached our first media timeout. We'll step aside and come back with more between Lynchburg and Christopher Newport here on LHSN.
When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom, but you'll also spend a lot of time in our top-notch facilities learning from athletic trainers and working closely with our student athletes. In the Graduate Cadaver Lab, you'll learn about the human body in the best way possible by actually studying the human body. This will provide a foundation to make you a much better athletic trainer. In the Athletic Training Laboratory, you'll get hands-on experience practicing your skills, applying concepts from the classroom, and working with faculty on research projects. It's also where our hydrotherapy facilities are. This space is also used by students for studying and practicing skills outside of class time. In the Sports Medicine Clinic in Turner Gymnasium, you'll work with student athletes from more than 20 NCAA Division III sports teams, helping get them back to practice and into the game as soon as possible. As an athletic training student, you're a big part of the success of our sports teams and the success of the local athletic teams. We see this relationship as a win-win situation. Welcome back to Turner Gymnasium. Come out of our first media timeout of the LHSN men's basketball broadcast season. Carrington Savage is going to bring it across. Just all seeing you find their third point at the free throw line. And Savage knocks down the mid-range J. That free throw finished by point came from Ian Anderson with 14-11 left on the clock. And it was their first point. So they finally open the captain's scoring. 16.55 left. So it was a full two and a half plus minutes. What a point. They've still gone that long, and then some without a field goal. Henderson drives in, gets the foul. Now he'll head to the stripe. It's the first and only made field goal attempt so far from CNU with just under 17 minutes left to go in the first half. And we got 13-15 to go. And it's tough to overcome a 15-point deficit without seeing some field goal shots fall down. It also hurts when Anderson goes one for two, and now that's the best that Henderson could do in this trip. Freshman came in today shooting 81.3% from the line. So a rare miss, Richmond, Virginia native. This is indeed a one for two trip. Deficit down to 14, and now Henderson's gonna pick up Savage. Cover the full 94 feet. Double screen at the top of the key for Lynchburg. They like this set with Young and we'll see Thacker, but this time it's Pittman. Another tough mid-range shot for Carrington Savage. Talked about it a minute ago. 0 for 3 from beyond the arc to start the year, but the mid-range Jay is there. Savage now with a team high six. Barber drives in, doesn't get the gimme, or excuse me, make that Hines, and Barber's there to clean up the play with put back two. First made field goal since 16.55. Full four plus minutes without a made field goal. Savage, heat check, misses it all. Coach Hillary Scott pleading his case that the shot was tipped, and that's a few other Hornets players are trying to convey to our officials who, if you were wondering, our officiating crew today includes the likes of Michael Terry, Quentin Murphy, and Blaine Hancock. Call's gonna stand, so it's back with CNU. 18% from the field so far. Barber, our player to watch, leaves the hook shot well short. Parham ahead for Savage for three. He remains out of three-point shot this season, now 0 for 4. He's shooting it well so far today. Jason Agner, he's a sharp shooter, puts it on display there. One of two players in Christopher Newport program history, score more than 500 points in their sophomore year. Agner, as well as School Hall of Famer, Lamont Struthers. Call that good company. Savage trying to get away from Hines. Tough look denied by Barber. Barber came in today averaging four blocks a contest. There's his first in transition. Agner for three, touches every part of the iron, but misses. O board for Barber. Defensive foul. Goes against Parham. Second foul, excuse me, make that third foul to go against Lynchburg. T.C. Thacker checks back in for the Hornets. 
Trigger man on the play for CNU is John Hines underneath the basket. Sophomore from Norfolk. Hines defended by Parham, drives in, tried to kick it out to Henderson, might have had an open look. But the pass well off the mark, another turnover for CNU now. 6th already for the captains. Now this game has started to find a state of equilibrium. Been about a 12 point advantage for Lynchburg over the last couple minutes of game time. An opportunity for the Hornets to try to regain their hot start. Carry the momentum closer and closer. The halftime buzzer, Alex Fitch just checked in. Junior from Ashburn, Virginia. First time calling his name today. Gets the handoff from Suggs. Pitch has been shooting the basketball well, for especially from beyond the arc, 50% so far this season. He's in the corner, defended by Brody. Backer against Barber, shot fake, gets his defender in the air. Tough leaner just outside the restricted circle, no good. Henderson for Brody. Might have been a walk, let you decide at home. Certainly close. Anderson can't get past Young. Barber against Thacker, our players to watch today. This is the matchup. Barber off the mark again. They'll say last touch by Anderson. Lynchburg takes over possession with 10.34 to go in the first half. CNU checks in Adrian Beasley. Tough start of the day for Barber. One for two from the field, just two points. Those two points does tie himself with Matthew Brody and Jason Agner, team best. On the other side, it's Theron Suggs and Cam Savage east with six. Well defended by Hines, hedging the screen. Parham back to Suggs. Picks up his dribble, tries the mid-range two, and sees it fall through. Now game high eight for Suggs. Nice step back, Henderson creates some space. Can't finish on the look. Last touch by a captain. Lynchburg ahead by 14 and get another stop. The defense for the Hornets has been stymieing today. Game of the day averaging 69 points per contest. That's seventh in the ODAC today. They have forced the CNU offense. Start today, three of 16 from the field. And for some more context, CNU led the Coast to Coast Conference shooting 46.7% from the field. Tough shot for Suggs, no good. Rebound for Beasley. Just past the midway point in the first half, wide open. Three point shot, well strong coming from Mike Lee. Captains. Over from beyond the arc. Can't say the same about Alex Fitch. He's one for one and stretches the lead to 17. And the Hornets, four of five from downtown to start today's action. Full timeout called by Coach John Krikorian. We'll keep you here. Hot start to say the least for Lynchburg. Here are some of the highlights. Lynchburg, 10 of 18 from the field. Contrasted a 3 of 17 for CNU and the captains 0 of 7 from beyond the arc. We talked about Lynchburg, 4 for 5. Now, what you have to take into account for, whether you're a fan of either one of these teams, those numbers are going to regress towards their true mean. For Lynchburg, the percentages are more than likely going to fall at least a little bit. And for CNU, they're not going to shoot 18% throughout the rest of this game. So, Strong start for Lynchburg. You're ahead by 17. Now, what else can you do? What other edges can you find to when your field goal percentage falls and CNU's is rise? How can you keep that big lead throughout this one? They have built themselves a nice cushion. Should also be noted, we talked about the battle on the glass. 14-9 rebound advantage for CNU. They are undefeated when they lead in that category, but that's also a misleading stat given they have seven offensive rebounds because they have 14 missed field goal opportunities when there's 17 attempts. On the other side, Lynchburg only has eight misses from the field. Not a whole lot of offensive boards to go around. Therefore, they only have one so far. Just some numbers to be thinking about early on and also a big differentiation in this contest. Six turnovers for CNU, just one for Lynchburg. It's tough to win games, but you don't win that turnover battle. Every player, coach, 
fan will tell you the exact same thing. I'm no expert saying anything like that. Players leave the huddle, 9.28 to go in the first half. Third timeout used by Coach John Krikorian, and the first two were 30-second spot timeouts and just trying to break the hot start for Lynchburg. And you could really argue neither one of them had that effect on the game. Well, this full timeout, we will see. CMU trying to go high-low with Beasley and Peterson. Well defended by Lynchburg. Won't let the pass get through. Now it's Peterson at the free throw line. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Kicks it out. Triple from the corner. Nothing but nylon for Devin Parrish. He was 0 for 4 on the season. From beyond the arc, he breaks the ice from downtown for CNU. Now 1 for 8. And it's the first trifecta of the year for Parrish. Suggs for Thacker. Thacker pushed through Peterson, but a nice athletic play coming from the senior. Big block. Three-point shot for Beasley. No good. Offensive board, Peterson. Been a great contributor off the bench over the last couple of minutes for CNU. After the offensive rebound, nothing to show for it for the captains. Tough shot, Thugs. Excuse me, Suggs. Nothing but the bottom of the net for Theron Suggs. First player to reach double figures. He's got 10. Peterson can't handle the bounce pass. Beasley tussling with Carrington Young. It's a jump ball, therefore giving possession to Lynchburg. Hornets tap deeper into the bench. They bring on Noah Bullock as well as Lucas Heckeman. And it'll be that tandem on the near sideline to inbound. Bullock defended by Madison. Had it poked away. Thacker nearly got his hands on it. Bullock stays with it. Now it's with Suggs once again for three off the side of the iron. Interesting shot coming with more than 10 seconds on the shot clock. The really discombobulated possession for Lynchburg, but the positive sign out of that is more than 12 minutes in the first half. That's the first real weird possession we've seen from Lynchburg. And weird clunky possessions are an inevitability, especially in college basketball. So to not have your first one more than 12 minutes in the contest, that's a good box to check for Coach Scott and his squad. Nice work from Hines, attacking the basket. He'll head to the line for two. So far, Hines held scoreless to this point. Talked about him in the open. 18 points against Moretta. Double figures as well. In their most recent game against Eastern University. Converts in the first free throw. And this is a spot where Hines has been really solid all year in a lot of categories except for free throw shooting. Even though he's shooting 45% from the line. And for somebody playing more than 20 minutes in all four games entering today, that signals he's a key contributor and he's going to have to knock down these free throw opportunities. Got to convert on the gimmies. A two for two trip certainly helps in that department. Deficit back down to 14. Pitch to Heckman. Shot fake, creates some space. The runner, missing strong. Big man rebound for Anderson. Heckman got his hand in. CNU maintains possession. It's with Madison. Looking for Peterson. Stopped as soon as he's picked up by Thacker. He'll give it back to the senior. Right-handed hook. This is well short. Peterson, offensive rebound denied by Heckman. Two on two the other way. Savage tries to go through Madison, and he'll earn the opportunity to go to the free throw line. Correction, they're going to say foul prior to the shot. To me, it looked like Savage was on his way up, but certainly close. Here's another look. 
the hustle from Peterson and the block from Heckerman. So an inbound from underneath the basket for Lynchburg. Noah Bullock with the honors, junior from Lorton, Virginia. Out of eight field goals so far this season. It's to Lockamy. Has a step on his defender, then swatted down by Jake Lotto, but stays with it. And Izzy Lockamy enters the scoring column with his first two. Anderson pirouette along the baseline and a pretty finish. Not much doing after the screen from Thacker. Three-point shot for Heckeman. Count it. Lynchburg ahead by 17. Heckeman, a very valuable asset, a big man that can stretch the floor like that. We saw his defensive contributions. And speaking of defensive contributions, nice job from T.C. Thacker keeping his feet set. It's the charge call. And another turnover to go against Christopher Newport. And now a technical foul given to head coach John Krikorian. Not happy with that call. And the result of the play was the ninth turnover. Go against CNU and after the Tech. Now it's Cam Savage heading the free throw line. There was that last play. A defensively by Thacker. Savage at the line. Sees the second fall through. It's now 33-15. Under six minutes to go in the first half, and Lynchburg has possession starting at their own end of the court. Agner defends Savage as he brings it across. Screen from Heckeman. And Agner going to be called on the reach. Seeing you bench. Very frustrated with that call, but to me, Looked like a clear reach as Agner was not only trying to go over top of Savage, but also trying to go from behind and create a lot of contact on that play. Heckman into Thacker. Left-handed finish. Won't count. Travel to go against fifth-year player from Madison Heights, Virginia. Just the second turnover for Lynchburg. But a stop nonetheless for CNU. There's no 18 point shot in the game of basketball. To make the comeback, it's got to start one possession at a time. Henderson for Anderson. Anderson tries to drive right. Back out with Hines, defended by Lockamy. Shot clock's at six. Down to two, Agner forced to hoist it up. And this is it all, that's a tough shot to put your sharpshooter in a position to take that type of look. But again, another example, second shot clock violation we've seen Lynchburg force here in the first half. And those plays really don't happen all that often. And, and really it's an indication of playing a full 30 seconds of quality def defense. And 30 seconds of defense is something that you talk to any current or former coach, that is magic. That is music to their ears. Pick and pop with Heckman. He won't get it after the screen. It's Landon Sutton, first time calling his name today. Losing it for a moment. Hines. Looked like he had Sutton cut off. That's going to be called for his first foul. Sixth to go against CNU overall here in the first half. One away from putting Lynchburg at the line for a one and one. And off to Sutton. Lockamy for three. Shot misses short. Henderson pushes the pace, pulls up just in front of the line. As it bounce around a few times, but ultimately shot no good. Lockamy evades Hines. Nice move. Savage on the baseline to Heckman for three. 
no good. Another rebound for Lotto. And a foul at the end of the play to go against T.C. Thacker. Second to go against the Hornets big man. He'll check out and Carrington Young comes on in his place. 4.07 to go in the first half. There you see Devin Parrish. I haven't called his name a whole lot today. The junior did make his first three-point shots. The lone age shot from beyond the arc for seeing you today. The captain's one for ten. Even just talking about from the field, they're shooting 20.8%. Lotto against Young. Picks up his dribble. Far side, corner three. Clunks off the iron and the board. Parrish no good on that attempt. Young, this guard-forward combo, turns it over, but he feels very comfortable taking the ball across half court himself. Agner creates some space for himself, evades Heckman. How about the finish at the rim? Someone who profiles as a shooting specialist, showcasing some nice dribble moves and a clean finish at the iron. Heckman, shot fake, and he gets Ian Anderson well into the air. Foul to go against the junior. And it's the seventh to go against CNU, so a one and one chance for Heckman. Take another look at this. You can't bite on a shot fake much more than that. First foul to go against Anderson. Agner's going to check out after making that layup. Agner leading the way for CNU with four points. That's without a made three point shot. Granted, the second of those two attempts was simply an attempt to try to beat the shot clock, and it came from 27 feet out, maybe even more. Lead to 18. Anderson. Sees Heckman fall in front of him. It's a great jab step and then dribble with the left. Foul goes against Heckman. Here's the last play once again. Heckman had his left ankle sort of give out on that play. He's the guilty party on the foul. Seventh go against Lynchburg. So one and one chance. Anderson misses on the front end. And it's Sutton slows down the tempo exponentially from what we've seen in the last couple of minutes. Sutton off the screen, drives the left. Nice touch. Layup won't fall through. Henderson gets a step on Suggs. Foul on the floor prior to the shot. It goes against the aforementioned Suggs. But a one-on-one -on -one chance for Henderson, who's one for two from the line so far today. Talked about it last time. He's at the stripe, shooting more than 81% from the line entering today's play. CNU overall as a team, 68.7% free throw shooting squad. That's third best in the Coast to Coast Conference. Another one for two journey for Henderson at the free throw line. He remains at two points, missing the second attempt. Lock me out to Pittman. His three point attempt well off the back iron. Barber for Beasley. Corner tray off the mark. Joshua Campbell remains over beyond the line this season. Dual screen action. The leaner for Suggs tries to go off the glass. Pittman had the offensive rebound poked away. Foul in transition to go against Lynchburg. Now a chance for the captains. Get back to the free throw line and 
has been a great showing from the stripe so far. Five of nine, like to see that efficiency be a little bit better, but here comes at least attempt number 10, and if Henderson knocks down the first, he'll see a second, and it'll be the 11th of the first half. That's a solid mark here in the first, not quite 20 minutes of play for CNU. Henderson does knock down the first. That could be a pathway into continuing to cut into the deficit. It should be noted, next foul to go against Lynchburg will be the 10th of the first half, and it's a guaranteed two for CNU as they would reach the double bonus. First two for two trip for Henderson. Doubles his scoring output, he's got four now. Hundred seconds and counting in the first half. Screen from Young. Pippen picks up his dribble. Now he gives a screen left for Sutton. Pearson a step away from being able to cut off that pass. Scoop layup. No good from Pittman. Anderson gives to Peterson. Goes up and over Pittman. Give him the basket and the foul. Nice little run towards the close of the first half for CNU as TC Thacker is going to check back in for Carrington Young. <laughs> now a 7 0 run for CNU. Peterson can't convert on the three-point attempt. We're down to a minute in the opening 20 minutes of play. Four out, one in offense, still for Lynchburg. Pittman, his three-point shot off the side of the iron. Another stop for the CNU defense as Lynchburg's offense has gone cold over the final two to three minutes of the first half. Jason Agner returns to the contest. See him on the baseline inbounding. Ty Henderson. Grad student to a freshman. Henderson gets a step on Savage. Can't finish in the layup. Stays the 13 point game. Savage looking to change that. Has Sutton. Nice cut and finish. The sophomore from High Point, North Carolina. Potentially the final possession of the first half. Barber. Nice finish over Jalen Hargrove. And now the final possession will be with Lynchburg. Three seconds. Savage pulls up for mid. He's been hot from that spot all day long. It continues that trend. He's got nine points and at the break, it's 39 to 24, Lynchburg ahead by 15. We'll step aside, come back, and recap the first 20 minutes of action if you missed any of it. So don't go anywhere. Plenty more to watch between the Hornets and the Captains here on LHSN. I'm walking around over on the crowd side. I always hear 
someone yelling, hey, Nat, take our picture, hey, Nat, get this, or something, or hey, Nat, you got that shot? Like, um, so I'm always like trying to photograph the crowds and my friends calling my name. I think sports at Lynchburg unifies us as a whole, no matter what background we come from, what differences we have, and what experience we've experienced through our lives. It brings us all together and we have one goal, which is to win. As a photographer, I definitely get to capture the emotion and the feel and the atmosphere of what's going on during the games and what's happening in the crowd and with the fans. We have hugely dedicated fans here at Lynchburg. They come out, whether it's rain, snow, sleet, windy, no matter what, like they will come out and support their team and cheer them on. They will sit through anything. <laughs> it's just, it brings us all together as one. The biggest thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interactions with faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full, well-rounded education and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level, uh, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret and it's going to be a lot of work, but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. Hi, Mara Willis. A lot of people go to the universities to find something to be a part of while getting their education. And when you come here, Lynchburg is that something, it becomes a family. It doesn't matter how long ago you had your professor, they still remember you and they remember all of the hard work that you put in. They're always there for you, and they always want to do the best that they can to help you succeed. Here, you learn how to love one another regardless of what's going on or what you believe. You leave here better than what you came in. It's what the school's really good at doing. Welcome back to Lynchburg, Virginia, the site of a battle between the University of Lynchburg and the Christopher Newport captains. Hornets out in front by 15. It's 39-24. Your score at the break here on LHSN. TJ Wingard here taking you through the action. Thank you all for spending part of your Sunday afternoon in a heavyweight battle between two of the best programs in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We're going to show you some of the stats for the first 20 minutes of action between these two sides and been rather one-sided and the shooting percentage with Lynchburg is where I want to start. At one point, it creeped up to 57, 58%. It was at a high mark, but with about 10 minutes left to go, 
We made note during one of the timeouts that that number is more than likely going to come down. And now it's at that 44%. And entering today's play, Lynchburg was shooting 45.6% from the field. So now it's closer to that true mean, but they shot the ball really well from beyond the arc. 5 of 11, 45.5%. That'll win you plenty of basketball games. But really, the talk has got to be about Lynchburg's defense holding CNU to shooting 26.7% from the field. That's 8 for 30. And then 1 for 12 from beyond the arc. That's 8.3%. And to give you more context, CNU came in today shooting a little over 47.5% from the field and then 36.7% from beyond the arc, which is a good enough percentage to win a lot of basketball games. So I think the talk in the first half has got to be about Lynchburg's defense. They did a fantastic job. And also bleeding into that conversation, 10 turnovers for CNU to just four for Lynchburg. But again, to continue a conversation we had in the first half, Lynchburg has been prone to these hot starts. They were up by 30 against Methodist in the season opener. And then at one point, they led Mary Washington by 13 with seven and a half minutes to go in the first half and ended up trailing by the halftime buzzer. So can the hot start translate to 40 really quality minutes of basketball for Lynchburg and Coach Hillary Scott? We'll find out once we get to the second half. But hey, so far you have to be very happy if you are a Hornets fan for seeing you. The offense is going to eventually pick up. You have to think that number is going to regress positively. We're talking about field goal percentage and three-point percentage. And you like to think their defense could create some more tournaments. But we'll talk about adjustments later on in the halftime show. But we're going to take one more pause, come back with some highlights from the first half of action between Lynchburg and CNU here on LHSN. Ready for anything, okay? Come on, let's go together. Together, let's go. Come on. Let's go. Keep going. Okay, let's go back to it. back to Turner Gymnasium on the campus of the University of Lynchburg. It's halftime here on Wayne Prophet Court. 39 to 24, your score Lynchburg out in front 
of Christopher Newport, a battle between two of the best teams inside the Commonwealth of Virginia. Welcome up to the broadcast booth, TJ Winger. Here with you, taking you through the action. We're going to show you some highlights from the first half, and I'm going to talk about some of the individual marks from the first 20 minutes of play. It's been really exciting, especially if you're a Lynchburg fan. The offense has been solid, and the defense has been fantastic. And we'll also talk about a little bit of adjustments that CNU might be able to make once we get to the second half. But as we show you these highlights, let's talk about some of these specific stats for individuals. Game high score is Theron Suggs with 10. Two of three from beyond the arc. You can always count on him getting a few buckets if you're a Lynchburg fan. And then a big plus in the offensive category has got to be Cam Savage. Four of eight from the field, nine points. That's just a point behind Suggs for a game high. And then you counter that. The other side, CNU. Highest score is a tie between Trey Barber with four, Jason Agner, and Ty Henderson also with four points. So Offense been a little stagnant to start for Christopher Newport, and really they're looking for one player to potentially separate themselves. And Henderson, all four of his points coming from the free throw line. He's gone 0 of 6 from the field, and that is just an alarming number right there for your starting point guard. We'll see how that changes throughout the second half. We also talked about Barber's our player to watch. Just four points, only taking four shots. You might want to feed him a little bit more in the second half. For turnovers, though, the good side is for CNU. No player with more than two. Overall, they had 10 in the first half, but there's no one player that continuously has given the ball away. And for Lynchburg, just four turnovers, four different players with one. That's TC, Dak, Cam Savage, Carrington Young, and Trey Pittman. And we'll also talk a little bit about plus minus. It's a great stat inside basketball, and it's one that doesn't get talked about nearly enough. As it stands right now, only one player with a positive plus minus for CNU, and that's Devin Parrish. He was one for two from the field. Both shots coming from beyond the arc. He has a plus minus of four. Leading the way for Lynchburg, plus minus of 21 for TC Thacker, then followed by Izzy Lockamy at 14. Theron Suggs and Cam Savage at a plus minus of 13. So a lot of quality contributors for Lynchburg, and CNU's looking for a couple players to try to eat into that 15 point deficit once we get to the second half, which we are just over two minutes away from. We'll take one final pause, come back, talk adjustments, and bring you the second half of action between Christopher Newport and Lynchburg here on the Lynchburg Hornets Sports Network. We're 60 seconds away from the second half getting underway between CNU and the University of Lynchburg Hornets. Up 39-24 at the break here on LHSN. It's TJ Wingard here with you saying thank you again for spending some of your Sunday afternoon here with us. Let's talk about adjustments for both sides, starting with the visiting captains. Down by 15, and, and the offensive numbers haven't been pretty, right? We talked about shooting just under 27% from the field, one of 12 from beyond the arc. And I'm not as smart as Coach John Krikorian. I don't ever claim to be. He's one of the best in the biz right now. But that said, feels like in the first three to four minutes, you have an opportunity to try to regain some of your momentum. And on the offensive side, I'd like to see this team get a little more simple on that side. Get it down low to Trey Barber. I know it's hard to work against TC Thacker, but maybe try to key in on a player or two. And basically, you could make this into a two-player offense, whether it's Jason Agner beyond the arc and then Trey Barber down low or some variation of a, a tandem like that. Try to get you a couple buckets early on. And next thing you know, you could turn 15-point deficit into single digits. You could be down by eight or nine. And next thing you know, momentum starts to swing your way. And Uncle Mo can be quite ruthless, but he can also be very beneficial if you find yourself down by 15, maybe, with 20 minutes to go. For Lynchburg, you'll have to see more of the same, especially on the defensive side. Not only have they been able to get stops and they force CNU to take tough looks, They've been playing it for the entire shot clock. We saw two shot clock violations. And again, if you talk to any former coach or player, playing a full 30 seconds of defense is no easy task. And it's just music to their ears. Then on the offensive side, it went into a little bit of a lull there towards the, the tail end of the first half. But overall, 
this Lynchburg offense has been able to create a lot of easy shots towards the basket. And they've shot the ball really well from beyond the arc, and that really does come and pay dividends to the work they've done inside the arc. Players like Cam Savage have been fantastic from mid-range, gotten contributions from T.C. Thacker inside the painted area and a few others as well. And if you keep doing that, and if we're seeing you to play inside and out on the defensive side, you're in a good spot. Also helps being up by 15. Captain's having the opening possession. It's with Parrish on the far side wing. Hitting the screen from Barber. Now Henderson looking for space against Savage. Shot clock in the opening possession. Down below 10. Hines drives in. Absorbs contact. Can't finish, but he'll head to the free throw line for two. And this is another pathway to potentially making a comeback. Look in the first half. 7 of 12 free throw shooting for CNU. Count of that to 4 of 6 for Lynchburg. The percentages, you know, uh, plays the advantage of the Hornets, but the quantity. And it could be a simple way to one, stop the clock, and then two, take a point or two every time you get to the free throw line. And slowly but surely, over five to then 10 and then 15 minutes, next thing you know, you're clawing your way back into it, and it's a one to two to three possession game, and you're right there in the thick of it. But that said, you do have to knock down your free throw attempts, and Hines, no good on the first. Does rattle home the second. And cut steps it down to 14. So a couple of different pathways seeing you could certainly make this a game. They're a good team, right? You're not a not gonna beat number 14 Johns Hopkins if you're not a caliber, a really quality squad. And you're not gonna play Moretta, number three team in the country, down to one possession if you aren't good. So things are gonna eventually turn around for CNU. For Lynchburg, it really comes down to how do you limit that damage once the offense starts to roll for the captains? Or how do you keep your offense churning and having momentum on its side to where you keep it at a 15 or so ball game? in your advantage. Turned over by the Hornets, that won't help. Fifth turnover on the day for Lynchburg. That's been one of the big differing points so far. 10 for CNU, 10 turnovers that is, five for Lynchburg. That's led to an 11-4 points off a of turnovers advantage for Lynchburg, which has certainly helped them stretch out past a double digit lead. It's been moved from Anderson, can't get away from Young. Parrish. Runner no good, rebound to Thacker. Carrington Young, been given plenty of space there by Ian Anderson. That's a big benefit for seeing you on the defensive side. Thacker against Barber. Barber gets his hand in the mix. Nice shot fake, clean finish for Thacker. And that's the big advantage that Lynchburg has potentially throughout the rest of this contest is T.C. Thacker really serves as a bailout for any offensive possession that doesn't get going in the first 10 to 15 seconds in the half court. You know you can just dump it down low and Thacker, more often than not, will give you two. Young to Thacker. Denied! Trey Barber. Big time block, but it looks like he's calling for the body foul with it. Barber talks to the official underneath the basket. Take another look at this. Great job from Barber being able to read the pass and get a hand in against Thacker. But ultimately, it's a grad student from Madison Heights, Virginia, heading to the line with an opportunity. Make it a 4-0 run all by himself. He knocks down the first. On the day, Thacker, seven points now. These are his first two free throw attempts, and he goes two for two. Barber trying to go right back at Thacker. Tough look. Barber stays with it and ultimately does get the two for CNU. Piccolato is going to check in for the captains, the next dead ball. Off the screen, Suggs, tough look from right around the free throw line. No good. He stays with it, gets the long offensive rebound. Savage takes the shot through the screen. Indeed. First trifecta to fall for Cam Savage this season. He's now got a game high 12. Lead up to 19. Largest on the day for Lynchburg. Barber going to be called for the travel. He tried to keep that right foot still and keep the pivot alive, but the more you try to deal with it, the harder that becomes. And ultimately, 
He nudges just enough. Referee sees it. And it's another turnover to go against TNU. They're 11th on the day. Young looking in the direction of Suggs instead. Rolls around him. Crosses left to right. Tough right-handed layup attempt. Foul on the floor after the play. It's going to go against Jake Lotto. Might have gotten his arms tangled up with T.C. Thacker. On the backside of that play. And now Lynchburg giving another possession. And that's the type of play that CNU can't afford to have. 16 and a half minutes. That's a lot of basketball. But down by 19, you can't give Lynchburg more and more second opportunities and allow them to not only get more looks at the basket like Thacker does here, but denied once again, but also Lynchburg can eat up more time off the clock, which obviously is a big benefit. So Thacker, another time where he goes up and takes up the contact despite the shot being blocked. And that's part of being a, a smart, crafty basketball player. Having your body in the right position where even if you're denied, say you're blocked, it's about the worst outcome you could have. Someone's going to hit you and the, the body contact's going to be obvious enough to where you head to the free throw line and T.C. Thacker now three for three from the stripe. Make it four for four. <laughs> 21 point lead for Lynchburg. Dominant showing so far for the Hornets. Lotto going at Thacker. Give him the basket and the foul. Great composure from Lotto, absorbing the pass. Going right up with the left hand, the senior from Fairfax Station, Virginia, will get his first free throw attempt on the day. Take another look at it. That's fundamental basketball. Lotto, though, misses on the free throw, tipped out. Nice play from Hines. Agner from way downtown, count it. Little 5-0 run for CNU, brings it back to a 16-point deficit. Agner now with a team-high seven points. Timeout on the floor is going to be stretched out to a media timeout. So we'll step aside and come back with more between Lynchburg and Christopher Newport here on LHSN. Sixteen, thirteen left in regulation out of the media timeout. Lynchburg up by 16, but a miniature 5-0 run for CNU. Starts with the front end of a three-point play, Jake Lotto. A nice finish over T.C. Thacker. Couldn't knock down the free throw, but it worked out in the favor of CNU as John Hines tipped it back out. Jason Agner was wide open and knocked down the trifecta. His first three to fall. He's got a captain's best seven points. Three players in double figures for Lynchburg. None for CNU. Suggs goes around Pittman a couple of times, and it's going to be a hand foul to go against John Hines, especially going around the screen. Sometimes your hands can get away from you, and it seemed to be the case there for Hines. He's the guilty party. Fourth foul to go against CNU. Young hands off to Savage. He's one of those three Hornets in double figures. Attacks the basket. How about that finish with the left hand? Savage has been fantastic for a player averaging three points per game entering today's play. He has quadrupled that figure. More than quadrupled it. He's got 14 now. Agner 
The floater no good. Put back is for Ian Anderson. Pittman open off to setting the screen for Savage. Hand it right back off. Savage goes up and won't get the basket, but does get the whistle on the play. Goes against Ty Henderson. Fifth all ready to go against CNU. So Lynchburg already playing with house money ahead by 16, but now two fouls away from working their way into the bonus. And then if Lynchburg gets there, that might be the nail in the coffin. And an opportunity for Lynchburg to just slowly but surely grind away points on nearly every possession because we talked about it with T.C. Thacker. In a lot of ways, he does serve as that, where, hey, 10 seconds left on the shot clock, nothing to show for it. Let's just give it to T.C. Lynchburg now has some options to where they could do that or 10 seconds on the shot clock. I'm going to put my head down, go to the basket, and oh, it's all right. I'll get a whistle, head to the line for a one-and-one one, or once we get to 10 fouls in the second half, which we're certainly on pace for, you head to the line for two. Adrian Beasley is going to check back in for CNU. He'll inbound to Henderson. 15, 18 left in regulation. Lead has stretched up to as many as 21 for Lynchburg, currently at 18. Beasley wants Barber. Foul goes against Dow Dunton. First time calling Dunton's name today, senior from Wake Forest, North Carolina. It's 49th career game played. He was sixth in the ODAC last year in rebounds per contest. Inbound to Barber. Fresh shot clock, by the way, for CNU. Nice finish for a Barber over Dunton. Barber now with the team high eight. Left to right crossover for Savage. Out to Pittman for three. Indeed. Second three point shot to fall for Pittman today. Offensive rebound for Beasley. Goes back up with it. Left handed finish, or excuse me, attempt, no good. And goes back to Lynchburg. Pittman with seven. He's knocking on the door to reach double figures, joining the likes of Savage, Suggs, and Thacker. With 15, 10, and 10, respectively. Savage in no rush to bring it across. Suggs with the shot clock at 10. Goes over to Dunton. Poked away. Nice play from Anderson, who takes the bounce pass from Hines. Forced to slow up, and Dunton called for the foul. As he was trailing the play, and as Anderson hit the brakes, Dunton bumped into him. Body contact, an easy call to be made. Second foul to go against Dunton. And this is going to result in Dunton checking out. And Justin Elkin checking in in his place. First time Elkins touched the hardwood so far today. Agner splits the double. An easy finish at the cup. Now Agner. The defensive responsibility against Savage. Another three-point shot for Pittman. Rattles out. Anderson. It's to Barber. Now back out. Anderson for three. Indeed. Big man stretches the floor. And he's got eight points now to go along with his seven rebounds. Suggs comes back, gets the trifecta for Lynchburg and a timeout called by Coach Hillary Scott. Full timeout, we'll keep it here. Two teams exchange three-point shots. Lynchburg now 7 of 14 from beyond the arc. Contrasted to CNU, 3 of 15. 
Take another look at it, and Suggs has been fantastic so far today. 12 points, and he's two of three from beyond the arc. That was his percentage entering the contest, 66.7%. And when Suggs is going to shoot anything above 40%, he's a player who's good for 20 on any given night. But really, the star of the show today has got to be Cam Savage along with Lynchburg's defense. But talk about the offensive side, 6 of 10 from the field, 1 of 2 from beyond the arc. That made three-point shot his first on the season. You hope, if you're a Lynchburg fan, that leads to more of those shots starting to fall for Savage and maybe some added confidence in that department. He also has four assists, which is the most of any Lynchburg player so far today. On the other side, CNU starting to get some more offensive momentum. A couple players knocking on the door of reaching double figures. Jason Agner with nine, Ian Anderson, and then Trey Barber both with eight. But then after that, a steep fall off. Ty Henderson has four. Devin Parrish still with just the one made three-point shot. He's got three points to show for it, tying him with John Hines, who Hines has scored 11 or more in each of the last three games, including 18 against Moretta. So for Hines to be contained to just three points and all of them coming from the free throw line, I'll be honest, that's not something I anticipated saying coming in today. And that, again, just speaks to defensive output for Lynchburg today. Here's the aforementioned Hines, defended by Lockamy. Gets it to Anderson. Defended by Pittman. Left-handed finish, and Anderson becomes the first captain of hit double digits. It's down to a 14-point game. Pittman has Lockamy now. Back to Suggs. Jordan Parham, shot fake, drives left. Two from inside the painted era, falls through. Seeing you trying to work quick. Barber out in front, finds the cutting Henderson. Nice play for CNU. Two teams exchange baskets. It's now 59 to 45 with 12 minutes and counting left in regulation. Suggs from downtown. Strong off the back iron. Elkin fighting with Barber for it. They'll say last touch by a captain de defender. So it's going to stay with Lynchburg. And dead ball brings TC Thacker back in as well as Darian Peterson. Additionally, Matt Brody is going to check in for CNU coming on for John Hines. Bound to Thacker. Foul called away from the ball. Looks like it's going to go against Jamal Madison. That is the case. Sixth foul to go against CNU. So next whistle to go against the captains results in a one-on-one -on -one chance for Lynchburg. And there's the foul. Block goes against Peterson. And Thacker is going to head to the line for the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Another look at the play. Back can do it from all three levels, so you have to press up on him. You have to be able to track that jump shot. Doesn't have a made three-point shot yet, but teams know it's in his arsenal. Because of that, you come out, play tight on Thacker, and eventually get to step on you, and feet get tangled up. It's an easy block. First miss from the free throw line for Thacker. Anderson sizing up Thacker, forced to pick up his dribble just in front of the baseline. Brody gives a lotto. Five out offense for CNU, really spacing the floor. Anderson gets the layup to go. The whistle on the play was a goaltending, so made basket regardless for Anderson. He stays perfect from the floor. Junior from Sterling, Virginia now. Five for five. That includes one of one from beyond the arc. 
excuse me, make that. Oh, no, I was correct. Five for five. Not often I get to say that, but I was correct. Noah Bullock takes the screen, receives the pass. Shot clock down to 10. Step back, Trey. Off the front of the rim. Point of attack continues to be the same for CNU. They are trying to get to the big bodies down low, and Lotto throws it away. Their turnover to go against the captains, their 12th on the day. Just the second of the second half, they've really improved in that area. Heckman gets it out to Lockamy. Lays off for Thacker. Working against Lotto. Fade, no good. In transition, Lotto receives the pass, his momentum carrying him towards the baseline, so he just chucks it back, keeps it in play, but finds Jordan Parham instead of a teammate. And it's a block to go against Henderson, and he can't believe it. His heels might have been in the restricted circle, so regardless of whether he thinks his feet were set, I think based off where he was standing, that might be the justification. Additionally, his feet do look like they're moving there on the replay, but we'll let you decide at home. It's going to be Jordan Parham heading the free throw line. First time all season. He heads to the stripe. Parham, a guy who can light it up from beyond the arc. So far on the season, shooting 50% from beyond the arc. First attempt of the year, no good. Savage back in the contest with the game high 16. And Agner back on the floor, four of seven, shooting from the field, one of three from downtown. He's got nine points, trailing just Ian Anderson. One for two trip for Parham. He's up to three points in the day. 13-point contest. Midway through the second half. Nice finish from Henderson. First made field goal on the day for the freshman. Ekman hands off. Parham to Thacker with two hands. Brody looking for space against Parham. Will get the foul on the play. Fifth team foul against Lynchburg. Henderson. Gets past Savage, cleanup duty for Justin Elkin. Great hustle play for Elkin, who just checked back in, the junior from Fairfax, Virginia. Comes through with a big stop as Lynchburg. They felt like they've been in the driver's seat all day long. It would include the second half, but it's a 13-point game with 9.20 left to go. You give Henderson another made bucket there, and feels like momentum might fully switch the favor of the captains instead. Nice play from Elkin. And a chance for Lynchburg to add on to their 13-point lead. Thacker on the far side wing. Backs down Barber. Couple of shot fakes. No good on the right-handed layup. Offensive rebound. Goes up. Draws the foul through all the traffic. I believe it's on Darian Peterson. Instead, they award it to Matt Brody. Ninth foul to go against CNU, so the next team foul. Puts Lynchburg at the line for a guaranteed two. This is a shooting foul, so it's going to be two for Thacker one way or another. Just updating you on the double bonus situation, and it's on the horizon for the Hornets. Thacker now five for six from the line. 13 points, good for second most for the Hornets. And it's a two for two trip. I should note that miss a few minutes ago for Thacker was his first missed free throw all season long. And he was somebody who had done a lot of damage at the free throw line. Coming to today's game, Lynchburg had 32 free throw attempts, 12 from T.C. Thacker, and he came in the day 12 for 12, and against CNU this afternoon is six for seven. Double screen set up for Agner, but 
Trying to drive baseline, Hines turns it over. To the disbelief of the sophomore, it becomes Turnover number 13 against Christopher Newport. <laughs> Foul against T.C. Thacker. He too in a state of disbelief. Six turnover against Lynchburg. Lucas Heckman's gonna check in and both Cam Savage and Thacker pleading their case. And there's gonna be a correction on the floor. Baseline referee changing his verdict. It's not often that players can plead their case and actually overturn a rule and it's gonna be a foul going against CNU and head coach John Krikorian to describe him as frustrated would certainly be an understatement. Pause in the action, 8.32 left in the second half. And because it's a foul against CNU, it's the 10th to go against the captains. You'll see Thacker couldn't believe it, but instead they give the foul to Darian Peterson. Two free throw attempts for Thackeray, knocks down the first. And Peterson's gonna check out now and Jake Lotto on in his place. And late free throws, specifically from TC Thackeray, who goes two for two this trip, have really powered the Lynchburg offense. The Hornets back in front by 17. There was one point where captains were Knocking on the door, being able to cut the deficit down to single digits, and room wasn't built in a day, right? One possession at a time, small milestones, trying to make a comeback and eat into that deficit. Felt like CNU was making some progress in that department, but Thacker's done a great job slowing the game down, getting the free throw line, and taking advantage of one of his biggest strengths in his game. Foul on the floor, six to go against the Hornets. Next one will send CNU to the line for the one and one Anderson nearly turns it over, and it's going to be called a travel to self pass. So, 15th turnover for the captains, and that's another costly category. 15 to 5. 15 turnovers in a game might be a little high, and something that Coach Krikorian wants to certainly see fall before the next time CNU takes the floor against Alvarina. But just 5 for Lynchburg? That is just an unbelievable mark. Still 8 minutes to go, and. That number could certainly inflate, but as CNU transitions to his zone defense, that has been a huge asset on the favor of the Hornets. And a big reason they're up by 17. They give to Thacker. He gets the basket with the foul on top. TC Thacker taking over down the stretch. He ties Savage with a game high 16 and the opportunity to add the cherry on top and get point number 17. The catalyst of that play is Noah Bullock. Beats his defender, forces the help side defender to step up, and then it's an easy finish for Thacker. Not even the foul could slow down the grad student. Free throw, nothing but nylon. Second time Lynchburg has had a lead. Reach 20. Largest lead of the day is 21. Hines can't create any space, and talking about CNU. And their loss against Johns Hopkins, and or their win against Johns Hopkins, I beg your pardon, their loss against Moretta. Both times out, the captains won the first half, then ultimately lost the second half. Had enough of a lead to hold on against Johns Hopkins, fell to Moretta, and then it was the opposite against Eastern. We're trailing at the break and then led in the second half, and ultimately edged past Eastern by 11. But so far today, Lynchburg won the first half by 15 and currently lead the second half 30 to 25. Another look at the last play. And another technical given to John Krikorian, his second of the day. 
This will end the afternoon for Coach Krikorian, and he heads to the locker room. And the fans at Wayne Profit Court will let the 12-year head coach hear it to say the least. T.C. Thacker to the line to take the technical free throws. And I think, honestly, talking about how CNU just has not been able to overcome Lynchburg in a lot of ways, down big in the first half and even in the second half as Thacker misses for the second time this season from the free throw line. It's a six-point advantage in the second half for Lynchburg, and, and that's got to feel frustrating, right? Every game up until this point, CNU has won at least one half. They've been the better team, at least when you talk about points on the board. That hasn't been the case today. And this is a really good team, and a team that has won at least 10-plus conference games every year under Coach Krikorian's leadership. And, and they're a team that has had a winning percentage every decade above 70% since the 80s. All that to say, there's a tradition and expectation to be the better basketball team more often than not and to win a lot of games. And today, it just has not been the case. Three-point shot for Savage, no good. And you can feel that frustration mounting. Put back basket for Carrington Young. The big man stays with it and stretches the lead up to a game on 23-point for its advantage. Peterson lines up the triple and knocks it down. It's back to a 20-point deficit, but... These past couple of possessions feels like it adds on to my point that much more. This has been a very frustrating afternoon. If you had to peg one word to describe CNU and how they'll look at today, frustrating, I think, is the one that comes to mind. Bullock to Thacker, tipped away. Last touch by Lynchburg. CNU to take over with 6.15 left in regulation. Meanwhile, for Lynchburg, you really couldn't have drawn up a better game script. They got out to a hot start and then the question had to be asked, is this another game where the Hornets start hot and then it peters out? Where they stay hot and continue to play 40 minutes of really quality basketball, and it's definitely been the latter as opposed to the former. Shot fake, Peterson drives in. Goes at Carrington Young, who thought he had his feet set outside the circle to garner the charge. Instead, it's called a block, and Peterson is gonna head to the line for two. Young was certainly outside the restricted circle. Maybe the feet were still shuffling. But to continue my point, this has been a fantastic showing from Lynchburg. And this serves, I know it's early in the year, this serves as a signature win, right? This is a CNU team that knocked off the number 14 team in the country and played a one possession contest against the number three team in the nation. So to come away with a Big win right now, it's a 19 point advantage over CNU. If that score were to hold, that will catch the eyes of national voters. Keep in mind, Lynchburg receiving votes coming into the year. So this is one of those wins that could take you from that receiving votes area into the top 25. Meanwhile, if you're CNU, still six minutes left to play, but talks about how frustrating today has been. And sometimes when you play 30 games in a season, you're not gonna be happy with all 30 and how they play out. And I think this is gonna be one where CNU turns the page of the calendar and starts looking forward to this upcoming Saturday's contest at home against Alvarina. I think CNU will be very happy to get back to their home confines. They have not lost yet this season 2-0. Two seconds of the shot clock, Suggs forced to chuck it up, misses the iron completely, and Lockamy was there to catch it, and it's an easy finish at the bucket. Sometimes it pays to be lucky, and that possession backs the point up perfectly. 74-53. Anderson tries to attack Pittman. No good on the layup. Pittman to Lockamy. One more pass. Pays dividends. Nothing but nylon. Anytime someone on campus sees Easy Lockamy, they ask him, is he cash? And the answer, last attempt is certainly yes. And the same could be said about Ty Henderson, his first trifecta to fall this afternoon. Timeout on the floor. It'll be stretched to immediate timeout. We'll step aside. Lynchburg up big by 21 over CNU. We'll step aside and come back with more here on LHSN.
When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom, but you'll also spend a lot of time in our top-notch facilities learning from athletic trainers and working closely with our student athletes. In the Graduate Cadaver Lab, you'll learn about the human body in the best way possible by actually studying the human body. This will provide a foundation to make you a much better athletic trainer. In the Athletic Training Laboratory, you'll get hands-on experience practicing your skills, applying concepts from the classroom, and working with faculty on research projects. It's also where our hydrotherapy facilities are. This space is also used by students for studying and practicing skills outside of class time. In the Sports Medicine Clinic in Turner Gymnasium, you'll work with student athletes from more than 20 NCAA Division III sports teams, helping get them back to practice. Welcome back to Wayne Profit Court, 454. Left in regulation, that's all that stands between Lynchburg and their second win on the season and starting the year 1-0 at home. And earning a big win against CNU and doing so in very convincing fashion. Meanwhile, CNU still some pride left to be played for. A chance to try to cut into this deficit and assuming the score will stand, it'll be a Lynchburg win. A chance to make the loss look a little more contested. But overall, if you've been watching from start to finish, it's been all Lynchburg all the way through. Lockamy knocked down a three-point shot, a possession to go for Lynchburg. Tries to get it to Pittman. They'll say last touch by the Hornets big man and out of play. Breaking the action, we'll talk about some of the shooting splits. The numbers have certainly come up from CNU. We anticipated those numbers would regress positively towards the mean. CNU shooting just over 40% from the field. Five of 17, that's 29.4% from three. And they have gone nine of 17 from the free throw line. That's just 52.9%. That's a number that certainly needs to be better. Hines drives in against Lockamy. It's gonna be a foul to go against the senior from Wake Forest, North Carolina. On the other side, Lynchburg, 46.4% from the field. So. I think that's a really positive sign if you're a Hornets fan. Right now up by 19, a little over four minutes to go, and, and it's not like you've completely shot the lights out. You shot an efficient game so far. You are at a healthy shooting percentage, but it has not been an unreliable number. It's not like they shot 62%, something that is certainly a rarity. And then from the beyond the arc, eight of 19 from downtown for Lynchburg, and 17 of 22 from the stripe. That has certainly been a big difference, especially in the second half. Lynchburg's done a great job getting the line and converting on their looks. Hines knocks down the second. He's got five points now. Talking about individuals. Three players right now in double figures for Lynchburg, led by T.C. Thacker, 20 points. Only five rebounds. So this does look like it'll be the first non-double-double showing, but I'd say 20 points is certainly uh, garnered Maybe the missed rebound production, and Lynchburg hasn't missed a whole lot of shots. Not a lot of offensive rebounds to go around to pat that number. Down the play goes against Henderson, and it's the 11th to go against CNU, so two free throws inbound for Cam Savage, who is second in scoring for Lynchburg. At 16, there you see a shot of the sideline. Coach Hillary Scott and on the far side appears to be Logan Miller stepping in for Coach John Krikorian. As Coach Krikorian got two technical fouls today, and been forced to exit the contest, and it looks like it's Logan Miller stepping up and filling in in his place. Then assisted by Roland Ross, class of 1980 at CNU, and began coaching in 1983. 39 years on the bench for CNU, so certainly some good help for acting head coach Logan Miller. Discuss that last play. An official. But continue my point. 16 points for Savage, and then Theron Suggs, the other player, in double figures with 12 as this pass goes through the hands of Elkin and out of play. A couple of late turnovers, but Lynchburg has been very clinical holding on to possession. Just eight turnovers now, and two in the last 30 seconds of game time. 
Anderson down low for Hines. Works against Fitch. This is the gimme. Savage works to the baseline. Shot blocked, looks like, by Ian Anderson. 18 seconds on the shot clock as Savage will inbound. And a timeout called by Coach Hillary Scott. Opportunity to talk about the inbound play and Settle down his team. It's going to be a full timeout. We will keep it here. And let's take the opportunity to talk about the upcoming schedule for both these sides. On the horizon for CNU, we talked about this Saturday. They'll be at home against Alvarino. Then the next day, taking on the number one team in the country in Randolph-Macon. Four o'clock tip-off against the Yellow Jackets next Sunday. And then after that, they stay at home against Averitt. Saturday, December 4th. Then we'll get their rematch. An opportunity to avenge this loss against Lynchburg on December 12th. That one will be at CNU. Tip-off set for 4 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. The next four games for Lynchburg. They'll stay at home for Saturday the 27th, taking on North Carolina Wesleyan. It'll be a 2 p.m. tip-off here on LHSN. Then on Wednesday, December 1st, they'll travel to Washington and Lee. 7 p.m. tip there. And then December 11th at Salisbury before heading to CNU on the 12th of December. Again, 4 p.m. tip there. So the first of two meetings between these two sides, and it's always interesting when you get an opportunity to see a team twice, how much changes between the first and second matchup. You'd venture to say a lot's going to try to change for CNU, and the captains do have the advantage of being at home for that second matchup, and it's a good crowd on hand just at the end of the semester here on the University of Lynchburg's campus. It's a solid crowd. They have certainly made CNU feel it, so now the coin will flip for that December 12th matchup as it'll be at CNU and a chance for Captains put together a strong home crowd and force Lynchburg to play through hazardous conditions, if you will. That said, it will be during winter break, so there might not be as many students there as there are today here at Lynchburg. Savage draws the foul. He's going to head the line for two. Savage has been solid from the stripe, three of five. All told, just six misses from the line, two from Thacker, two from Savage, then one from Pittman and one from Parham. Savage knocks down the first. This is a Lynchburg career high, 17 points today for Cam Savage. Transfer from Barton College, now up to 18. Lots of fouls down the stretch here in the second half. This one's going to go against Izzy Lockamy. Working against Hines, who's going to head to the line. It's the ninth foul to go against Lynchburg, so it's a one and one chance. The next foul to go against the Hornets will put the captain to the line for a guaranteed two. Hines came today shooting 45% from the free throw line. Today has certainly improved upon that mark. Now six of seven with a chance to add one more to that total. All six points for John Hines from the free throw line, from the field, 0 of 3, has not attempted a three-point shot. Second attempt off the side of the iron. Rebound to Elkin, who's been pouring in some quality minutes towards the latter half of the second half. Double team against Savage, trying to get the pass away to Thacker, who Starts his arms out, gets it ahead of Matt Brody, but Thacker called for the travel. Coach Hillary Scott, not a fan of that call. And just in front of Coach Scott, Devin Parrish will check out, and Jason Agner is back out there. Nine points. The opportunity to join Ian Anderson and Ty Henderson in double figures with 12 and 11 respectively. Hines still without a made field goal. It's been a tough time coming for the sophomore. And that's to say the least. Two and a half to play in the second half. 
Savage off the screen. Counting. Savage got his first made three-point shot today, and he's one for three from beyond the arc, but he has made a living. Right around the free throw line and at the elbows. And Junior now with 18 points. Brody from downtown rattles it home. Nat Brody came today shooting three of 15 from beyond the arc, and Brody now one for one today. So there is some positive you can take from today's contest, and Matt Brody can start to improve his three-point shooting. It's just another weapon in the toolbox, if you will, for CNU. This is a captain's team that has plenty of talent on it, right? Ty Anderson has not necessarily shot the basketball great today. And to be specific, three of 10 from the field, done better from the free throw line, four of six there, but Henderson's been a really impressive freshman guard, starting point guard at that point. And you give him weapons like Jason Agner, who's a prolific scorer and specifically a sharp shooter, and knock it down from anywhere across half court. Game of the day averaging more than 12 points a game. Trey Barber's been a really nice addition as a sophomore in the starting lineup. Can do it from a lot of different parts inside the arc. And he battled overall pretty well against T.C. Thacker, given the competition in that contest. Adrian Peasley is a guy who's got plenty of playing time under his belt. He and Agner are both 50-year players. And then also John Hines, who certainly had a tough day. But you got to think Henderson and Hines had better play in their upcoming future to go along with players like Agner, Beasley, and Barber. It's a CNU team that certainly will be in the thick of things. And these are two teams with NCAA tournament aspirations. And I definitely think CNU has a pathway to do that. They were the preseason pick to win the Coast to Coast Conference. You win the conference, you got the automatic qualifier in Lynchburg. Have a tough draw playing in the conference with the number one team in the country in Randolph Macon. And Roanoke College, a really good squad as well. But pick to finish fourth and certainly have a chance to either win the conference or get an at large bid. Certainly helps with playing a tough out of conference schedule, including this one against CNU, and then later on December 12th, getting a rematch against the captains. Savage drives in, the floater well off the mark. Brody to Henderson, shot fake, drives in, pass deflected by Thacker. Peterson to Henderson, back once more. Peterson for three, no good. Tipped away by Savage out of the hands of Hines. Going to stay with CNU and we'll have a full platoon swap for Lynchburg, Landon Sutton back out. On the hardwood, Kevon James checks in. First time we get to call the name of Elijah Davis. We're talking about Elijah Davis. Got to talk about his family, Hubert Davis, college basketball legend. Certainly a fantastic bloodline. The college basketball player and basketball fan in general. Excited to see Elijah play this year. Jalen Hargrove checked in as well as Lucas Heckman finished the five players on for the Hornets. Bounce pass. Give is to Trey Trimble. A nice finish, or excuse me, Tyler Trimble, senior from Warrington. It's his first two points in the day. We have less than a minute to play. Layup from Sutton, no good. Hits the deck hard. Lee nearly turns it over. Stays with it. Drives in against three defenders. Can't convert the layup. Rebound for Hargrove. About a two and a half second difference between shot and game clock as this one all but over and currently a 17-point Lynchburg lead. A statement win to say the least, and Elijah Davis breaks it up to a 19-point advantage. And that goes down as the first two points in the career of Elijah Davis, son of Hubert Davis. Doesn't get much more chill-inducing than that if you're a college basketball fan. J. 
James picks up the loose ball and will bring it across midcourt. And the final buzzer will sound. Lynchburg improves to 2 and 1 with a statement win. And doing so in their home opener against Christopher Newport. Coming out on top, 83 to 66. The captains fall to 3 and 2. Their two losses now to the number three team in the country and to Lynchburg. But an exciting contest to watch all day long. We'll show you some of the highlights throughout this match, and I'll give out our LHSN player of the match. T.C. Thacker is a player who's good for 20 any given night. Therefore, I think we got to give it to Cam Savage. His additional scoring output was a huge difference in this contest, and he made a living from mid-range, especially in the first half, but also got his first three-point shot to fall in the season. Five of seven shooting for the free throw line. Team best four assists, and he tied Thacker to lead the way with 20 points on the day. So Cam Savage, your LHSN player of the match. Again, upcoming schedule for CNU sees them at home against Alvarino. That game is this upcoming Saturday, and a chance for CNU to wash this game away. And you get back to their winning ways on their home hardwood. And, of course, we have to talk about the rematch between these two sides. December 12th will be at CNU. So if you're a Captain's fan, this is a game you just try to put behind you as best you can, wipe it away from memory. It just was not your day. Every once in a while, you get a dud in college basketball. For Lynchburg, this is a huge win, and this is what this team has the potential of doing. Shot the ball well, played fantastic defense, you limited turnovers. All that to say, great total team win for the Hornets, too. We'll be back at home on Saturday against North Carolina Wesleyan. That's going to do it for us at Wayne Profit Court. Once again, final score, 83-66, Lynchburg on top of CNU. For my director, Sam Rice, and the rest of my fantastic LHSN broadcast crew, my name's TJ Wingard, and until next time, we are signing off.